So as a kid, do you remember your parents saying things to you that you thought, if I'm ever a parent, I'm never ever going to say these things to my kids? But guess what? If you're a parent, you probably ended up saying a few of them. And here's a few that maybe that, that, that you've heard growing up and a few maybe that you've used. Um, here's this one. Don't make me turn this car around. Okay. okay. If you turn it around, then, then what? Um, if all your friends jumped off a cliff, would you do that too? No, that's right. <laughs> Apparently, he or she has heard that. Um, what part of no don't you understand? As long as you live under my roof, you're going to obey my rules. Or when I was your age, oh man, yeah, I know, when you were my age, you walked in snow uphill both ways, we get it. How many times do I have to tell you? I always want to say to my parents, well, maybe one or two more times, but I never did. Close the door. You may have heard this one. Close the door. You weren't raised in a barn. Or I've had it up to here with you. Or just wait until your father gets home. Or in some homes, just wait till your mother gets home. That's even scarier. Or, you know, I hope that someday you have a child just like you. What does that even mean? We're so... That's, we're so mean. Here's another good one. There are starving kids in Africa. Eat your spinach. Or the famous one, I brought you into this world and I'll take you out. <laughs> or, or I'll give you something to cry about. No, you don't need to. I'm crying already. I don't need you to give me something else. And someday, someday when you're older, you'll, you'll understand. And of course, everyone's favorite, because what? I said so, because I said so. And because I said so, I think is the one that frustrates almost every kid. It frustrated me, and I know it's frustrated my kids uh, when I've used it. And, and the reason is because every, every kid, every child, they want to know why. Why? And I think that's one of the first words that children learn is why. As parents, we often use because I said so because we're tired of, of the back and forth or we're tired of answering why or, or we're just tired, period, and we just say because I said so. In, in today's scripture, uh, Psalm 100, we see God through the psalmist. He's giving us commands and he's, he's telling us what we should do. And he's also not only telling us what we should do, but how we should feel when we do it. And obviously, if anyone in the whole universe has the right to say, because I said so, it's God. Because he's God. But the great thing about God, uh, his word to us in Psalm 100 is that he gives us the command. It's, it's the what. Here's what I want you to do and the attitude that I want you to have. And he also gives us the why. He tells us why we should do the things that he's telling us to do. And we're going to read Psalm 100. Actually, we're going to read it together. We're going to go old school here. And we're going to do a little bit of responsive reading. So that means that, that I'm, going to read, I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. And this is going to be on the screen. And then as a congregation, you guys are going to read verse 3. I'm going to read verse 4, and then you're going to read verse 5, right? Okay, so what could go wrong with this, okay? So, and, and here's the deal. When you read your part, you read it together, not just as fast as you can, but try to read it together. And I'll get you started, but, but I'm going to read first. So here we go, Psalm 100, uh, verses 1 and 2. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into His presence with singing. Know that the Lord... Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For awesome. I knew you could do it. That was great. Um, <laughs> somebody called, yay, we did it. I, I, and, but did you see the flow of the passage there? You, you had a command and then there was the truth. Uh, command, verse, verses 1 and 2, truth, verse 3. Command, verse 4, truth, verse 5. Or to put it another way, it's, it's, it's here's what I'm telling you to do, verses 1 and 2, and here's why, verse 3. Here's what I want you to do, here's what I'm commanding you to do, and here's why. 
verse three and or verse four and then verse five. And the whole theme uh, of the psalm is about giving thanks. In fact, some of your Bibles may actually may actually have the title uh, "A Psalm for Giving Thanks" or "A Psalm of Thanksgiving." And what we just read is actually a song that, that the original audience would have sung. They would have sung this together. It was a song of celebration, a song of thanksgiving. It was a song about the truths uh, of God. And this wouldn't have been a, a quiet, solemn moment in the temple, I don't think, or as they were entering the temple. This, this, this would have been a celebration that as, as they're anticipating going to be with God and going to be in God's presence into the temple as they're going to worship. And, and I don't know that they would have ex- said it exactly like this, but it, it would have been, you know, okay, come on, everybody, let's, let's make some noise because we're about to enter into God's presence. We're about to go into his courts and we're, that we're, we are going to celebrate God. But let me ask you something. Why didn't we celebrate just then when we read that? I, I know it's, 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 it's church, and, and we're supposed to not act like that. We're, you know, sit and be quiet, be polite. But really, if you stopped and you looked at what we just read, and you really understood the why behind the what, I, I think we would all jump up and down and, and, and holler, if not, if not physically do that, but, but for sure in, in, our, in our spirit, in our hearts. And then I know the pushback to this is, is, well, what if I don't feel like it? My life is not a season of celebration right now. In fact, my life is opposite of that. It's a, it's a struggle. And I, I, totally, I totally get that, and I understand that. God is in no way trying to minimize the reality of life and life's hurts and life's struggles, his difficulties that we all face. But what he is doing, what God is doing here is he's reminding us who he is. Okay, he's wanting to take the focus off of, off of our circumstances, off of ourselves, off of our present reality, but what he wants to do is he wants to remind us of who he he is, what he has done, and that alone should be more than enough to give us hope, to give us peace, and catch this, to give us joy because of who he is. And so let's look at this together. In your outline, you'll see uh, five sections. There's three blanks in each, and what I want to do is I want to give you the command. We're just going to go right down the scripture. We're going to give you command. I want to give you the the truth, so it's, it's, it's the why behind the command. And then I want to give you a, a practical application of, of what that would mean for you and I today. So here's the first one. The first command is make a joyful noise. And the truth behind that is, is the truth is the Lord is God. And the application is public declaration. A public declaration. Psalm 96.3 says, Declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous works among all the peoples. We're not just supposed to make just random noise or anything like that. The noise that we make, the words that come out of our mouth, are, it's telling the world about Jesus Christ. Declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous works among all the peoples. God allows us to get a glimpse of who He is. And we don't see all of Him yet, We couldn't comprehend it. We couldn't handle it. But through his word, he does allow us to see, and and through things around, we we do get to see, allow us, he does allow us to see is is more than enough what we get to see of him and what we get to know of him is more than enough that it should overwhelm us, but also it should overflow from us. So overwhelm us, but also overflow from us. God is not meant to be something that is kept hidden or, or kept secret. That's one of the things we learn as a kid, you know, hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it, it, it shine. What is that it? It's, it's light. It's God. It's God in us. It's not meant to be hidden or kept a secret. And you've probably heard this many times. Our relationship with God is personal, but it's not private. We're to declare God to the world. I came across this quote the other day and it says, never will the world be in its proper condition until in unison it cries out to God. So our world will never be what it was meant to be. Our world will never look like it was meant to look like until in unison our world is crying out to God. And I love that. Our world world was created. It was created to cry out to God, but it doesn't do that. Our world cries out to things other than God. Our calling as believers 
is to make God's name known to this world. The Lord is God. That's our public declaration. The Hebrew word there for, that's used there is, is Elohim. And it's actually a plural noun, and it's a term that's used to refer to, to, sometimes used to refer to false gods, or it's sometimes in Scripture used to refer to angels, and sometimes it's actually, in different parts of Scripture, it's used to describe humans. But the term here, it's, it's, it, what it's doing is it's taking that word, but what it's doing is it's using it to, to point to God. In other words, it's, it's saying that He is the one true God. And He is above all. He has authority over all. There is no other God. He is God. He's not a God. He is, he's not one of many gods. He's not a type of God. He is God. We make a joyful noise, and don't forget that part, joyful, because the thing, because He is God, that, that brings us joy. We make a joyful noise because we know God, and we know that He is the way to salvation. He is Lord, He is Almighty, He is Creator, He is Sustainer, He is Strength, He is Wisdom, He is Love, He is. That's why He described Himself. He said, I am. And it's our job, it's our calling, it's our command to make that known to the world. And we declare things all the time. We have this platform now, it's been around a while, social media, and that's a place where a lot of us declare things, and some of us declare way too much, but we talk about things, not only on social media, but around, we, we talk about our kids, we talk about our jobs, we talk about our marriages, we talk about our life, our politics, our views, our stuff, our families, our TV shows, our sports teams, we're declaring a lot about a lot of things all the time, but let's make sure as a people of God, that we are declaring God. Make a joyful noise. We are making a public declaration that He is God. Second command there. The second command is serve with gladness. Serve with gladness. And the truth is, is that God, He gave us life. And the application, the practical application for you and I is to remember it's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about me. Colossians 1.16 says, for through him God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things that we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything, you should underline this sentence in your Bible if you don't have it underlined. Everything was created through him and for him. When Paul says, God, right there in Colossians, that God created everything, I want, I want, you to, I want to make sure that you understand that, that when it says everything, it, it includes you. And I say that because sometimes, as, as a people of God, not, not just as people who don't know Christ, but as people of, of, uh, that we would call ourselves followers of Jesus as believers, sometimes we act like we are the Creator. What I mean by that is we act like life is about us. That it is all about us. It's about me. It's about my wants, my desires, my hopes, my dreams, what I, me, 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 me. And that's the way we act. But you never see that anywhere in God's Word. You never see that anywhere in Scripture. Never does it say we, you, me are the most important thing. Now, we are valuable. We, we have worth. We, we have what God has given us. But it never says that we are above all. God created everything, and He created it all, all of it. You, me, this world, He created all of it for Himself. And you look at me, or you look at that, and you may say, well, that's, that's awfully selfish of God. But it's not selfish, because for us to give our lives to anything or anyone else other than God is to settle for second best. Let me say that again. It's not selfish because for us to give our lives to anything or anyone else is to give our lives to what is second best. And it's not even, it's not even second best. It's, it's, it's way, it's just, it's just not, it's the opposite of what we should be. I mean, it's like looking at a plate that's in front of you. And on that plate is a warm, homemade chocolate chip cookie. And I mean, it's, it's, it's big and it's sitting there. And right next to it is a rice cake. 
and then you reach down and you grab the rice cake. That is, that, that's, that's ridiculous. Why would you settle for eating cardboard when you could have a warm, homemade chocolate chip cookie the size of your face? Why would you do that? Oh, I, you know, I, I'm kidding, of course. You, you don't eat healthy things, even if it tastes like cardboard, eat healthy. But here's, here's the point that, that I'm trying to make. God created us for his enjoyment and for us to find enjoyment in him. There is no more perfect place to be than in obedience to God's will and living your life for him. The command is to serve. Well, what if, what if I don't want to? Then I would say, well, maybe, and God would say, well, maybe you forgot where you came from. Maybe for, you forgot how you got here. Maybe you forgot why you were made. God is reminding us why he, he can command us to serve him with gladness. He can command that because he made us. He knows how we should operate. He knows how we work best. He knows us. And he also knows, here's the, here's the other part of that. Not only does he know us, but he also knows what our lives are would look like when we give ourselves over to something or someone else. He knows the hurt and the pain that causes. He knows the frustration that that causes. He knows the emptiness and the disappointment that that leaves us with. God isn't being this big selfish jerk. He's being God, which means he's, he's leading us to what is best for us and what is right for us. And that's, that's him. We serve him with gladness. Again, don't, don't, miss, don't miss the emotion there. Don't miss the command. Make a joyful noise. Serve him with gladness. We serve him because it is all about him. And that's the way that it should be. Because if it's not about him, if there's something better than him, then guess what? He's not God. He's not supreme. He's not all. But he's saying us serve him because it's not about us. It's not about us. The third command there is to sing. The truth is we belong to God. And the practical application there for us is peace and purpose. Sing. I looked up that word and you know what it means? It means sing. It does. And, no, and, and I thought at this point in the sermon maybe we, we could sing something, but... Um, everybody left, so I guess we're not going to do that. But um, I'm just kidding. But, but you know, it, it says that we, it doesn't say sing if you can. It doesn't say sing if you can. It doesn't say sing if you have a good voice or a trained voice. No, the, the command is to sing. And, and I get that we don't all have the gift of music. So how many of you are going, I am not a singer? Well, here's the deal. The song comes from your heart. The song is an expression of joy. And where does that come from? It comes from the truth that we belong to God. But you need to hear that. We belong. You belong somewhere. You belong to someone. We belong to God. We are His. We are not orphans. We are not alone. We have a perfect, a perfect heavenly Father who cares for us, who loves us. And we are his. He is our shepherd. And we are his sheep. That's, that's why we sing. Not just in here, but that's why you should sing everywhere. Now, again, I'm not saying be a weirdo and walk through the halls and come into his presence. You know, I'm not saying that. Okay, you might, that might be you. My dad's a hummer and he hums everywhere he goes. It doesn't matter where he's at. He's just humming a tune. But here's the deal. The deal is the song comes, it's, it's from what's inside. We belong to him. That's why we sing. And you know what that means? Because we belong to him, that means that we have peace and we have purpose. John 20, 21 says, again, he said, and this is Jesus talking, again, he said, peace be with you. And this is Jesus talking to his disciples in, in the midst of, of a really uncertain time. He's just died on the cross. Okay, that freaked them all out. Even though he told them it was gonna happen, he just died on the cross and then he arose again and he's back with them, but he's about to leave them again. And so it's a really uncertain time and he knows it and, and, and he knows what they're feeling. So what he says is he says, peace, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. 
purpose. First, or 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making His appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, Come back to God. You see, our peace, it isn't based on the circumstances. Our peace comes from God. Peace from knowing that we are His and that He loves us. Peace from knowing that, that His eyes They never leave us. Peace from knowing that He walks with us. Peace from knowing that He wants what's good for us. Peace from knowing that He's in control. Peace. Some of you need that today. You need need to hear and need to know that God gives us peace. We should all just kind of stop right now and take a deep breath and to know God's peace. Because I, I, I said it earlier, a lot of us, some of us, maybe all of us, we walked into this room and we brought like a thousand things that are going on in our, in our mind right now and in our hearts. And we've been worrying about them or we've been thinking about them this whole time we've been in here. And I know what that feels like. I know what that's about. But what we need to hear is we need to hear Jesus tell us peace. Peace. We need to be reminded of God's peace this morning. He gives us that peace. And with that peace also comes this this purpose. The verse said that we are his ambassadors. Here's, Here's what that means. God sees value in you. God sees ability in you. And it's there because he gave it to us. When we choose to believe our lives are worthless or when we choose to believe our lives are meaningless or we we choose to to think there's nothing, nothing good can come from us, then what we're saying is, God, we're saying, God, you're a liar. Your word is not true. But we've, been all, we've all been given, whether we recognize them or not, we've, been all get, we've all been given different talents, abilities, different opportunities, different skills, different gifts. But we've, we've been given those different things, but we've all been given the same job the same task, the same purpose. We are his ambassadors. We are his representatives. I love how the the verse we just, the way we read in the New Living uh, Translate, it says that God is making his appeal through us. He's entrusting his message of hope. He's entrusting the message of salvation. He's entrusting his whole plan. He's entrusting it to us. What a huge task that is, but what what a huge honor and privilege that is that we have been called to be his ambassadors, to be his voice in this world. And he tells us peace. Why? Not peace because it's going to be easy. Why? Not because peace, because it's all on you. or It's none of that. He just says peace. Why? Because I'm God. You belong to me. You're mine. I'm with you. And so let's go and do what I've called you to go and do, what I've called you to be, peace and purpose. And we all crave those two things. We want peace. We want purpose. And they can be found only in Jesus Christ. And that's why we sing, sing. The fourth command is thankful worship. The truth is God is good. And here's the practical application for us or what it means for us is we have access to God. Hebrews 4, 14 through 16 says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who's been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Underline this part. Let us then approach, the, approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Thankful worship. And you might be thinking, I thought we just covered singing in that last point. So why are you talking about, well, worship is more than just singing. You know this, you should know this. Singing is an outward expression of worship. Worship has to do with your heart. You can do all the outward things that you want, but if your heart is not right, then all those outward expressions, they're, they're meaningless. Worship is valuing God above all things. Worship is our heart's response to who God is, knowing and understanding God, His goodness, His perfection, His strength, His power, 
His justice, His sovereignty, His mercy, His grace, His forgiveness, and on and on and on and on. We know that and we worship Him. And we are thankful in our worship because despite, here's the the cool thing, despite God's awesomeness, despite God being, being God, He still seeks, He still desires, and He still pursues a relationship with you and me. He's big, Okay, he's, he's big, but he still wants to come close. He's not far off. He's not sitting on some mountaintop. He wants to come close to you and me. I'm always, I'm always amazed, at, 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 and myself included, how we freak out sometimes around famous people or our famous athletes, we're just watching them like, oh, look at him, look at him drink water, or wow, did, did, did you see that? She, she said hello to somebody. And we just sit there, and, 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 and if we get the opportunity to meet them or actually talk with them, then it's, it's like the coolest thing ever. And some people go, go way overboard with their reactions. It, I've actually seen people cry just when they're around like famous people. It's like, ah. I can't contain it. You know, they're just, they're just in tears, and I just gotta know what's wrong with you. But they're just so overwhelmed, and, and it's it's a little it's a little bit ridiculous. But here's and you know, and that's that's neato when we get to see someone we know. But let me let me think about this just for a second. Let me let this sink in. Okay, for all the movie stars and, and, and sports stars and famous people that, that, that you would like to meet or want to meet or whatever. Okay, l- l- let me say this. You have access to God. There's no bodyguards around God. There's nobody keeping God, at keeping you at a distance away from God. There's not some special pass that lets you have this access, but it's because of, of Jesus Christ and your relationship through Jesus Christ that you get to have unprecedented access to God the Father. The God that spoke all of this into existence, he says that we can approach him, and not just approach him, but we can approach him with confidence. It's the image that I get, it's like like a child who who sees their parent and immediately runs up to their parent. They don't ask for permission, they don't wait to be summoned, they just run up to their parent. Here's Here's the thing, they run up to their parent fully expecting to be embraced, There's no fear. There's no apprehension there. They know they belong there. They feel loved there. There's security there. That's where they want to be. And thank God that we can approach Him that way. God, we come before You without fear of rejection and totally confident in Your mercy and grace and love for us. We can run into God's throne room. We are His children. We have unbelievable access to our God. That speaks of the value He sees in us, that He would allow us that access. He is God, and we should never forget that. We should never forget that He is God Almighty. But we should also remember that God Almighty also wants us to know that He is God our Father. Now that term may, may turn some of you off because you may not have a, a good earthly representation of that. But all of the things that you would say, I, I don't have or don't like or whatever in my earthly father, you need to know that in your heavenly father, there is perfection. He is our father. And the last command is a thankful blessing. Thankful blessing. And the truth is, is God's love and faithfulness, they never end and our practical, the practical application for you and I today is salvation and security. Notice that thankfulness is there twice in verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Then it says, give thanks to him. And you probably heard Brother Chad talk about this, or he said this before, but when something is repeated in Scripture, it's something that we want to pay close attention to. All of God's words are important, but there's emphasis being made here on thankfulness. We're called to be thankful because it's easy to follow into, to fall into the trap of entitlement or thinking that I deserve this. Thankfulness goes hand in hand with humility. You're not, here's, here's the thing I've learned, you're not thankful for what you think you deserve. We are thankful because God 
didn't give us what we deserve, but instead he gave us salvation through Jesus Christ and security through his finished work on the cross. Titus 3, 4 through 7 says, But when the kindness of God our Savior and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us, not by works of righteousness that we have done, but on the basis of his mercy, through the washing of the new birth and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us in full measure through Jesus Christ our Savior. And so, since we've been justified by His grace, we become heirs with the confident expectation of eternal life. The huge, huge why behind the command is that God has saved us. And it wasn't based on our acts of righteousness. In in other words, we didn't do anything to earn it or to deserve it. It was His mercy on us, His children. It was His love that saw us where we were, And he did not want to leave us where we were because he knew where that would lead us to. His love never stopped. He he, he saw where we were and he wanted to pull us out of that. His love never stopped and will never stop. Even in our rebellion, the Bible says his love endures forever. When we turn our backs on him, he still pursues us. His love and his faithfulness is not based on who we are, but it's based on who he is. We are are saved, when we, when we believe in who Jesus is and we turn our lives over to Him and allow Him to be Lord, we allow Him to be our boss, we are saved. And we can live in that victory here today, but it also speaks to what's coming when we join God in heaven. We are His and nothing can change that. Nothing can separate us from that. This is good news and guess what? It's good news for all generations. It's good news for everyone. One of the questions that I I had was in reading Psalm 100, I was like, how do we bless God? We know that God blesses us, but how do we bless God? And uh, I was reading John Piper in this quote. He said, in the scripture, when God blesses men, they are thereby helped and strengthened and made better off than they were before. But when men bless God, he is not, God is not helped or strengthened or made better off. Rather, man's blessing God is an expression of praising thankfulness. So when the Old Testament speaks of blessing God, it does not designate a process that aims at the increase of God's strength. It is an exclamation of gratitude and admiration. Why are we commanded to give thanks, to bless His name? Because our God's love and faithfulness endures forever. Because of His Love and his faithfulness, he made a way for us to no longer be separated from him. But because of his love, because of his faithfulness, our sin is forgiven. And we can experience that forgiveness, that mercy, that hope, that eternal life. Make a joyful noise. Serve Him with gladness. Sing. Give Him thankful worship. Bring to Him thankful blessing. Why? Because the Lord is God. Why? Because He gave us life. Why? Because we belong to Him. Why? Because He is good. Why? Because His love and faithfulness never end. I hope and pray that we never forget who God is and all that He has done. As believers, we're called (laughs) to make some noise to tell the world of his goodness, to die to ourselves. We've been given a peace. God has given us peace, and he gives us purpose. And we've been given unprecedented access to our God. You have been given salvation and security through Jesus Christ. Church, I pray that that would be the noise that we make. The noise that we make.